They were beaten and tortured, deprived of all basic liberties. Don't do this, don't do this, I, I, I cried. Please don't do this. Child labor. Little ones worked until they dropped dead. We would tie two electrical wires on the tips and set the wires on their genitals while the person is tied up. The result is better. Right now, two million people are detained in hundreds of heavily guarded prison camps, subjected to unspeakable daily horrors. Most were dragged from their homes or snatched off the street by members of a secret police. They were beaten and tortured, deprived of all basic liberties and most were never seen again. Thanks to hidden camera footage smuggled out of these prisons, as well as the testimony of escapees, the accounts of whistleblowers, and the findings of independent international tribunals, we know the fate of many. Women raped and tortured, child labor, little ones worked until they dropped dead, and the healthy literally farmed, kept alive so their organs can be forcibly harvested and sold on the black market. Their crime, being born. For years now, the world has been learning more and more about China's campaign of persecution waged against the Uyghur minority and Turkic Muslims who inhabit the northwestern region of Xinjiang. It's been their home since the height of the ancient Silk Road trade route that connected China with the Middle East. The Uyghurs contributed much to the country's wealth and prosperity and helped shape the face of this region. China's modern rulers, the Communist Party, would rather the ethnic minority remained a thing of the past. The CCP is engaged in what human rights groups and a steadily growing list of world leaders have compared to genocide. A new whistleblower, a former Chinese detective, has given us the latest insight into China's treatment of a staggering number of people. If you want people to confess, you use the electric baton. We would tie two electrical wires on the tips and set the wires on their genitals while the person is tied up. The result is better. Thousands of police officers going door to door, dragging people from their homes, bundling them into trucks and taking them to prison camps. This whistleblower says he was involved in the arrest and interrogation of countless Uyghurs who were ultimately imprisoned. The man, simply named Jing by CNN as he's in hiding in Europe, said every new detainee was severely beaten, whether man, woman or child. He said torture was common, hanging people from the ceiling, electrocutions, waterboarding, starvation, sleep deprivation, and the use of a thing called a tiger chair, a metal device that completely immobilizes suspects. Sadistic assaults, often of a violently sexual nature, uh, first of all, they surrounded me, and the police there ordered me to, to like, uh, uh, take off my uh, underwear and let me and bend, like, over. Uh, bend, bend over. Don't do this, don't do this, I, I, I cried. Please don't do this. You just confess, you just admit what you have done. It's good for you. Once false confessions are extracted, prisoners are dumped in a prison camp for re-education and further punishment. By indefinitely holding the men, and sterilizing the women, human rights groups say Chinese authorities are basically conducting barbaric population control. On top of this, entire neighborhoods have been emptied out and flattened, mosques and other religious buildings destroyed, businesses seized and closed down, all amounting to the systematic and rapid elimination of an entire people. Beijing denies this. Its huge network of camps and merely vocational training centers basically a boarding school where students learn culture and language and etiquette. They insist it's part of efforts to stamp out extremism. There's little to no evidence of any wrongdoing on the part of those targeted. International action has been slow. Achieving change in a country like China is very difficult. Much of the world has been reluctant to stand up to Beijing's human rights abuses. There are signs that's changing, finally. Targeted sanctions, new trade regulations, strong words of condemnation, and the United Nations investigation, all in response to the treatment of the Uyghur people. But for millions, as well as their loved ones, it's far too little, far too late.